my hallelujah belongs to him because he is worthy of our hallelujah. When you look back over your life and you think about all the things you've been through, my hallelujah belongs to him. When you think about all the times you've been lying on and how God made you overcome those lies, my hallelujah belongs to him. When you think about the times you should have been dead and gone a long time ago, now you can say, my hallelujah, it belongs to him. Can we all give God praise wherever you are? Amen. It's preaching time in the house of the Lord. It is preaching time. Seven minute and 53 second sermon but the Holy Spirit he's going to toss in about 20 extra minutes so somewhere around 30 minutes we'll we'll have a, a word for you today is Palm Sunday so I'm going to go to the Palm Sunday text found in Luke chapter 19 in Luke chapter 19 start at verse 28 Luke chapter 19 giving an honor to God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Luke 19, verse 28. It says, after Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, tell him the Lord needs it. And those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he told them, and they, as they were untying the colt, his owner said to them, why are you untying our colt? They simply replied, the Lord needs it. They brought him to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the coat, and put Jesus on top of it. And as he went along, people began to spread their cloaks on the road. And when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully praising God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the heights. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, you need to rebuke your disciples. But Jesus said, I tell you the truth. If they keep quiet, these stones will cry out. I'm going to read verse 40 again. I got happy on that one. It says, I tell y'all the truth. If they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Now from the past board version, it reads like this. Jesus shook his head. I tell y'all, y'all make these folks be quiet. Guess what? The praise ain't gonna stop. But the stones will cry out instead. You may be seated wherever you are. You may be seated in the presence of God on this morning, on this first Sunday of April, on this Palm Sunday, I want to preach from this thought, the gospel according to stones. The gospel according to stones. If you don't mind, if you're on Facebook or the conference call or the church, look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, what you know about the gospel according to stones? That's the wrong neighbor. Find your little neighbor. Make sure y'all six feet apart and say, neighbor, I know you're six feet apart, but have you heard about the gospel according to stones? Let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. God, we need you today. We are in some difficult times, God, but we all have a testimony. There's a testimony from some stones on today. Lord, speak your truth, speak your word, and use the broken vessel, God, to do it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. 
my brothers and my sisters, on this Palm Sunday, as we prepare to celebrate Jesus entering into Jerusalem, we find Jesus here in Luke's Gospel getting ready to head into Jerusalem for his final farewell tour. Most people don't know it, but it's Jesus' last time heading into Jerusalem because he's headed towards his final destination here on earth. Jesus has fed thousands. He's given sight to the blind. He's raised people from the dead. He's cast out demons. But Jesus has still not done yet. But there's still a few things that he has to do. As he heads in, he tells some of his disciples to go to the next town. You'll find a donkey unloose and bring it back to me because I have a purpose for it. His disciples listen to him and they do exactly what Jesus says. They go, they untie the donkey. His owners look at him and say, what in the world are you doing? This is ours. They said, look, Jesus told us to come get it. So we just doing what the Lord told us to do. They bring him back and as they bring the donkey back, they begin to start laying their cloaks on top of this young donkey that has never been ridden before, but now Jesus is getting ready to ride it. And wouldn't you know, once Jesus gets on top of it, as they make their way down the Mount of Olives, down that road, people are giving God praise because Jesus has showed up. They're giving him glory and honor because Jesus is showing up. They're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, because Jesus is showing up. My brothers and my sisters, let me just pause parenthetically and say that this is how we should be whenever Jesus shows up in our lives. We ought to give him praise. We ought to glorify him and we ought to magnify him for what he has done and for what he will do. And it's a shame that some of us will start to act like Pharisees and when we see Jesus show up, we start getting angry. We start having a pouting face. Matter of fact, I heard a preacher put it this way. Some of us act like we've been eating lemons and sniffing chitlins when Jesus shows up. But there's a few of us here this morning or in our living rooms right now that says, anytime I get a glimpse of the presence of Jesus, I just start getting happy. Anytime I see the presence of the Lord, I start getting ready to give a good run and a good shout because Jesus has done some stuff for me. Jesus has brought me over some stuff. He's brought me over some mountains. He's brought me through some valleys. He's brought me through some storms. Is there anybody in my house, in the church house, or in your house who can say, had it not been for Jesus, I wouldn't be where I am today. So anytime I see him, I don't need nobody to pump me up. I don't need nobody to encourage me. I just give him praise because he's good. Matter of fact, some of us, you got up this morning, you was giving God praise when you got in the shower. You showered up and giving God praise. Some of us, you was cooking bacon and sausage and making some biscuits. Man, we even eating a bowl of cereal and you were still giving God praise. Some of you in your living room right now can't even have a seat because when you look back over your life and think about everything that Jesus has done for you, you can't sit down on the goodness of Jesus. You can't sit down on his blessings. You can't sit down on his mercy. You can't sit down on his grace. Is there anybody who can say he's been so good to me? I ain't going to sit down on him. But this ain't where the story stops. Watch this. The Pharisees say to Jesus, they say, Jesus, you need to tell these folks to be quiet. They make it too much noise. They get in my way. They talk about Hosanna, Hosanna. We, we don't know no Hosanna nowhere around here. You need to tell your folks to be quiet. Can I just, can I just pause and park right here real quick, put a quarter in the meter, and say there are always people around you who get mad when they see you giving God praise. There are always folks around you that when you come sit by them, they, they, they can't stand you sitting by them because you're always giving God praise. But the people fail to realize that you don't know what I went through last week. You don't know what I went through this morning. You don't know what I went through this whole year. And so when you think about what I've been through, then you start praising God just like I am. But the story don't stop there. Jesus, his response is simple. 
And Jesus simply says, if they be quiet, the rocks are going to start praising me. Now, to many of us, when we see that, it doesn't look like much. We've often said that as a, as a way of saying that if people don't praise, then a rock will praise or something will praise. But there's a deep lesson in this. In fact, there's a, there, there's a testimony that rocks have as well. A rock has a story as well. And, and, and even rocks have a gospel. And what we see is Jesus saying, if they won't praise, guess what? I got something that you, you think won't praise me, will start praising me. I got something that ain't got a mouth that'll start praising me. I got something that don't have eyes and don't have ears. And if they start praising me, somebody else or something else will start praising me. That's where the rocks step in. Because can I tell you this morning, rocks have a testimony too. Rocks have a gospel too. Rocks are saying, look, look, y'all looking down on me. Y'all been stepping on me day in and day out and stepping around me day in and day out and picking me up and tossing me here and there. But I got a gospel too. I got a testimony too. And my first testimony is, number one, I was created by God in the first place. That's my testimony. And although I've been stepped on, although I've been tossed around, I'm just glad to be close to Jesus in the first place. Let me break it down a little more. Many of us, we are like rocks. In our lives, we've been looked down on. We've been stepped on. We've been trampled over. We've been picked up. We've been tossed. We've been broken. But we still got our same praise. Many of us are just like stones. You, you, you have been in places where, where you don't want to necessarily be, but God has you there for some reason. But guess what? Stones have a testimony. And the testimony here in this passage, number one, is that we, number one, we have a purpose that is given to us by Jesus. Let me break it down. Let me show you. When they show up, what people fail to realize is when Jesus is headed into Jerusalem, he's being ridden by a donkey, but a donkey is getting its foundation by the rocks. Some of y'all missed that. Let me press we ride and try that again. The donkey is getting a lot of credit because Jesus gets to stand on the donkey and the palms are getting credit because the palms were torn from trees and Jesus is crossing over the palms. Somebody came and broke us up. 
And when they broke us up, they put us in different and various places. And the places we went, we were often looked over. However, our testimony is, although we've been broken at times, we still are useful. Although we've been broken to pieces and tossed here and there, we still have a purpose and we still have a testimony. And we're really glad that when we were broken and put in a place where we felt forgotten, Jesus still showed up to use us where we are. And so our testimony is we've been broken but God still has a purpose for us. We've been broken, but God is still going to use us. We've been separated to pieces, but God still has something. I don't know who I'm talking to, but many of us have been broken in this season because we've lost our jobs. We've lost some money. We've lost some comfort. We've lost some things we wanted, but guess what? God still has a purpose for us, and it doesn't matter if I'm not The rock. 
But finally, my brothers and sisters, The Rock, they have another gospel to tell us, something to tell us within this gospel, and that is that if nobody knows how to give God praise, then we know how to give God praise. Stones, good stones, they know how to give God praise. Good stones, they don't need people to pick them up and to have pom-poms and try to force them to give praise. Stones, they already know to give God praise. Stones don't need nobody to call them up and say, give God praise. Stones already know how to give God praise. Stones don't need to be in a physical church to give God praise. Stones can be in the house with PJs on and a bonnet or a do-rag and still give God praise. Stones don't need pockets full of money to give God praise. Stones just glad they got a pocket in the first place. Stones don't need two or three jobs and good money to give God praise. Stones just say, when I wake up in the morning and I see the dew on the roses, I can give God praise. And Jesus says, if these folks be quiet, I got somebody else who will give me praise. And they can give me praise because they still got purpose. They can still be give me praise because even though they've been broken, they still can be useful. They can give me praise because they still got a testimony. And you might not see their testimony, but they got a testimony. You might not see their praise, but they got a praise. Are there any stones in the house with people looking down on you and always saying, why are you looking like that? Why you can't give them praise? Well, they don't know your story. Say, I give them praise all the time. I don't need to be in church to give them praise. I give them praise in my car. I don't need to be at 231 Street to give them praise. I give them praise in the bathroom. I give them praise in my house. Because when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. So the stones can give them praise. You know, the stone thing sent me a text message this morning. They said, Art, you don't realize how, how important we play in your life. That when you drive down the street, had it not been for us, you could go to where you needed. The house that you're living in, had it not been for us, you would have the foundation that you needed. And so never forget that although you step on us at times, we still got a praise down on the inside. And so Art, if you don't want to give God praise, guess what? We can do it all by our doggone self. Because we remember one day when Jesus looked down on us and said, I have a purpose and a plan for you. And we're so glad that on that particular day that Jesus made sure we were exactly where we needed to be. Because we have the role of ushering Jesus into his final destination. So sure, the palms, they get all the praise. That's fine with us. Sure, the donkey gets all the praise. That's fine with us. Surely the disciples, they get a shout out. That's all good with us. But had it not been for us laying down and being the foundation, then Jesus might not gotten to where he needed to be. So we can give God praise knowing that we've got a purpose even when you don't see our purpose. We can give him praise knowing that we have a praise even when you don't see our praise. Because we have a gospel just like you. We have a story just like you. I said, what you mean you got a story? just like me. How, how y'all got a story? They said, well, if you pick up the Bible and you open up the book, you'll realize that when Moses came down from the mountain, we were right there and God put Ten Commandments on us. I said, that's all y'all got? They said, no, our story don't end right there. Do you remember the story, Reverend Gordon, when Joshua and the people had to march and they was trying to get to Gilgal and they had to go through the River Jordan and they didn't way to get through, but there were 12 stones, and they put out 12 stones in the water, and when they put us 12 stones out in the water, the water began to recede, and they began to walk on the stones, and when they walked on the stones, the water kept receding, and they got to dry ground. I said, is that all y'all got? They said, we glad you asked the question, because we got some more stuff for you. You remember the story of Samson? When Samson was blind and weak, they tried to make Samson look like a fool, but they placed Samson in between two of us. Samson put one hand on this one. Samson put one hand 
yelling on another. He gave a praise to God. And when Samson pushed the stones, the stones made the temple come down.